everybody to yet another hit in the turnbuckle podcast i am your host adam cousins and as usual i am joined by my good friend now we normally say tag team partner dave but i think me you and andy are now a trio right so it's yeah gonna i be, think so I yeah think one third of the trio it is our AEW guru our dynamite man dave and as you like put it dmd now usually i'm oh, sorry first off dave how are you are you suffering from man flu I'm okay, mate. I'm, uh, yeah, I've been suffering the past couple of days, to be honest, and it took me out this afternoon, but I've come back strong. So back I'm glad to be here. You've come back fine, George. Don't pass it down the computer as a virus. My no, friend, I'll keep it my to myself. My mate is getting married in the morning. I do not fancy having the flu uh, when I'm trying to deliver his speech. Now, as you all aware, generally, I do the introductions on this podcast. But Dave, you decided uh, a couple of weeks ago, you text me. Now, I'm not going to try your accent. I did try it today. I ended up sounding Australian. So I'm not going to do that today on this podcast and embarrass myself uh, more than I was embarrassing myself in the mirror this afternoon. But you basically text message said, uh, I don't want to tread on your toes, mate, but am I okay to start reaching out to talent to book on the show? And I said, absolutely. Just tell me who so I don't reach out to them. And if they want to come on, get me to do the calendars to, so we can work it all out together. So as you flexed your muscles, please introduce our guest. Yeah, so I'm really excited to be having this chat today. Um, we've got a, a top, top UK star on, uh, somebody that's been signed to the WWE. Uh, she was at NXT UK. She's worked for all the top promotions in the UK. She's worked for Progress, Rev Pro, Pro Wrestling Eve. Uh, she was actually trained by a, w, a current WWE superstar uh, that we'll hopefully be able to talk about. Uh, I'd like to introduce Millie McKenzie. Hello. Hey, Mel. Thank you okay, Mel? I'm good, Th thanks. You. Thanks for joining us. How's, no, uh, how's life um, post WWE and uh, on the UK wrestling scene at the minute? Yeah, I think obviously it was a, a shock initially and a big change because I was going from wrestling maybe once every six weeks with WWE to getting back on the road and wrestling every weekend. Um, so that was a shock, but, you know, I'm enjoying it again. It's tiring, but it is fun. Yeah. What? Um, how did you get into wrestling? I, I suppose starting at the beginning. What? Um, when did you get into it? Was it as a kid? And when did you decide that you'd like to do it as, as something, as a hobby that's kind of turned into a job, I suppose? It is like a really boring story, really. What like I just used to watch wrestling when I, I just turned on the telly one day yeah. and it was on. And then I started watching it and it was like John Cena against Dolph Ziggler on like a SmackDown highlights video. Because I didn't even have like, well, the WWE Network wasn't a thing. Yeah. And it was just like, I don't even know what it was. It was just a SmackDown highlights. Um, And I was watching that. I was would have been about maybe nine. So it was like yeah. 2009, 2010 time. Um, and I just had never seen anything like it and I started watching it and then I got hooked on watching the wrestling. I used to love it. And then I thought, oh, I wonder if I could, would be good at this. And yeah. then I just asked my mum to take me to like a training school, but I didn't realise that it existed in the UK. Like, I went to watch the the live shows, um, but I didn't realise it was like accessible to train in the UK. So I Googled places in Coventry. And I found like a school not far from me. And I just like, my mum finally took me and that was it really. Did you have friends at the time? Because when, when me Did and I'd got into wrestling, <laughs> no, no friends, <laughs> friends at the time that were into wrestling as well, because when, when we got into wrestling, I'd, yeah. everybody was into wrestling. Yeah. You know, it was kind of the attitude era, particularly for me when I got into it more and more. Um, but everybody, it was like the cool thing to be into. Uh, and obviously, as the year's gone on, uh, I've only got a couple of friends, really uh, close friends from that period that still watch. So did yeah. you have friends at the time that, that watched it as well? Or was it just something you got into on your own? Yeah, completely on my own. There was no yeah. one, like none of my friends watched wrestling. Well, obviously they do now. Yeah. But none of my friends it at the time. They didn't even know what wrestling was. A few of the boys like, obviously knew John Cena and The Rock and all that, but no, it was completely like on my own. I remember when I, I told my friends I was starting, they were like, what? You can do that in the UK. You're mad. All oh, this and that. And yeah, here I how, am. <laughs> how soon into it did you kind of realise that you were pretty good at it and the your your coaches were saying to you, you know, that, that you perhaps could go further in the world of wrestling? 
Yeah, well, I think as soon as I started, like, my trainer, like, the people, at the, at the very, very start, there was someone called Psycho Steve, TJ Sky, Kieran Young. There was, there was so many people, but those three kind of always, and Tony, sorry, as well, there, there were so many people that kind of saw something in me um, yeah. when I didn't see it myself necessarily. Like, I was just doing it for fun, and although I loved it, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to start wrestling training, it's going to be the job that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. It was just, I've always been sporty and I've always played sports and I've been playing football for like nine years. And I was kind of getting a bit fed up with that. And then I found wrestling. Um, And it was a few months after I was like getting into it properly that um, like a few of them pulled me aside. I'm like, you're actually really good at this, you know. And I started training at other places and they were saying it to me as well. So then I guess I started to believe in myself a little bit and keep training. And then eventually they put me on a show, maybe. I think it was like, I started training in February 2015. And then I was on my first show was October 2015 as well. Um, my first match is on YouTube somewhere. And bless him, Tom after me. But God, it's very different to now, hopefully. Well, hopefully you'd think that anyway. Just yeah. uh, touching on YouTube a bit, Millie, do you think nowadays that there is just this massive reach of wrestling now? I mean, I, I said it the other day, I went on TikTok the other day and watched wrestling. It, it just yeah. feels like now, like, I mean, Dave, when we were when we were growing up watching this, we have to we had to either watch the show when it come on or go on like WWF at the time dot com to get the results. Nowadays, like the average, I was talking to an NWA wrestler the other week that just come back from Australia, where they they went out there with the Smashing Pumpkins. They done the show, but it puts eyes on them because NWA don't have a TV deal, so they used YouTube. So it's on six oh five Eastern in the states on a on a Tuesday and a Saturday. So, do you now think that wrestling has just got a, a bit? It's boomed in a lot of ways, but social media or that sort of aspect of it has helped. <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's also changed the style that people wrestle in, lo like looking at it from my perspective, because the thing, like I always think the things of my matches, like that get gift the most or like film the most, is like my face when I'm doing something silly or like dancing <laughs> around. And like that obviously wouldn't have happened before. And I think, again, for me, like I am always busy and I don't have time. And obviously I love wrestling, yeah. but now I kind of don't have the time to sit there and watch full shows and match after match. So like for me, scrolling on TikTok, seeing like little highlights, that's perfect. Or Instagram stories, that's like enough wrestling for me that I don't hate it. Like that's like a perfect amount I can yeah. tolerate. Yeah. It is difficult to watch it. Trust me, I have to watch it because we do review shows on it every week. Yeah. And it's uh, it's a tough watch having to sit there three hours, two hours, two hours, and soon to be another two hours. It can be. Yeah. I mean, just incredible. Said something very similar yesterday, didn't he? He was talking yeah. about the long matches on AEW and thinking that that probably, uh, I don't know, some people's attention span isn't what it was years ago, and they just want little bits of wrestling, I suppose. Yeah, it's like your best bits. For me, that's the, the best thing to do. I just think, show me the highlights. That's all I need to see. I don't need to see the things at the start obviously if I'm watching it for like different reasons like if I'm actually watching it to learn something then I'll watch the entire thing because those little bits do matter yeah. like if you're watching it in in person obviously they do matter but for me just flicking through my friends doing things it's nice just to see the bits because yeah. I know about everything else yeah well how, how early into your training mill did you um did you meet Pete Dunn because I yeah uh, hinted at it in the introduction uh he was somebody that you spent a lot of time with and he trained did he train you or did he move yeah. your training on a lot he, yeah so as I said I was training at Phoenix in Coventry and they were kind of a smaller school like there wasn't a ring and um, well they had a ring but it was like a six-sided ring and it was a an interesting ring I think that's a, a nice way to put it yeah. um but we were just training on like gym mats and then they'd have the ring up like every six weeks, if that, before the show. Um, so I never really had a chance to train in a ring that much. And then it was with uh, TJ and Kieran that eventually, I think I'd say once a month, but it was probably more like once every six weeks, they would take me over to the Hunters training in Tipton, actually. Yeah. Um, I think that's where Hayden went. Yeah, it um, is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lee and Jim Hunter. Yeah. yeah. And that's where I met Pete. And I don't I don't know what the training was. Like, I think it was just 
I don't know if it was fight club training at the time and they didn't have any rounds of attack training, but it was Pete, Dan Maloney, Lee and Jim. Um, yeah, and that's where I think I learnt the next level up. And yeah, I've that was like a, a good good step up for me there because I'd never trained in like a, a four-sided ring and all of a sudden I'm gone from training with these people that are kind of all, they all do it for fun and the shows are every six weeks and there's maybe... 50 people there and it's fairly relaxed to all of a sudden I'm in Tipton training with some of the best wrestlers in the Midlands with all these older people and I'm like the only young girl it was very it was just big step out of my comfort zone really yeah but I just asked Millie um I I done I mean well, this is when I was in a, bit, a lot better shape than what I'm in now this was about 20 odd years ago I, I um I went to a wrestling school for about a month and, and I learned very quickly and very painfully that it's not going to work for me. Um, that first initial bump <laughs> in training. Yeah. <laughs> my my, I think my words were "holy shit" when I when I hit when I done that first bump as such. What was it going through your head at that time when you took that initial first bang onto that mat? Well, I think. You know, the first bat bump I took, obviously mm. we've done crash mats before yeah. and I'd done kind of martial arty stuff before. So it wasn't actually too bad. I think because I was so nervous, the pain kind of went out the window. But I remember when I was learning to flip bump and we were doing it in a drill and every single time I smashed my heels in this ring, in this six-sided ring that was padded with like my sister's bedroom carpet. <laughs> and every time, where I knocked about 15 years off my life my heels would like smash on the floor and my eyes would water and then I'd have to get up and do it again and I did it three times in a row and I was just sitting there after with like tears rolling down my cheeks <laughs> oh god oh, yeah. yeah yeah that was yeah I can't oh, yeah. it was a body slam I think for me done it yeah like running the ropes I was cool I was all right with the ropes bit the ropes was no. okay see yeah. I've, I've only done that once I ran the ropes and I tore my back to shreds um <laughs> it, it looks I just watched it like obviously growing up thinking it looked relatively simple and it probably is relatively simple but the next day I had welts all over my back I was in I was in a right mess yeah, just it's... touching on sorry mate, just touching on you we were you were just saying about you're the you was the only uh woman in, in the class uh at wrestling women's wrestling last I don't know decade or so maybe maybe longer has finally sort of been given the opportunities that it should have been given and it, or it was given just not as much when I mean like for example when me and Dave grow, was growing up watching it there was probably like Trish Stratus and Lita uh, yeah. that was probably two of the names you had other ones in there that could go but they were just never given the time yeah what do you think the end goal is with it now is it going to get to a point where women are going to have their own, maybe they do even do, I, I don't know, they have their own federation, or is it just, look, we want to be on equal par, we've got the, we're just as good as the men, it's an equal, you know, this is an equal business at the end of the day, it's not, shouldn't be pushed one way or the other, is that the end goal, or is it, there is there more to it? <clears throat> I think with me, personally, I've always kind of had the perspective of, it's based on ability, like for me, mm. it should be solely on ability, nothing else, whether, like, regardless if I'm a girl, I shouldn't be given a spot on the show because, oh, okay, well, we need a girls' match, so I'll feel that. Like, I, I don't want to be on a show for that, and if that's the reason for booking me, then please don't. But, like, I want to be on a show because I'm a good wrestler, regardless of my gender, age, whatever. Like, yeah. I think now we're very lucky that there's so many girls that are coming up and they've got such good abilities that there are more girls' matches on shows. Um, But, again, I don't think that, should be or times are changing we need more women's matches I think it just be should just be sorry the the ability is improving therefore like the quality of matches is improving so you know we're earning earning our spots I guess hopefully yeah I think there's a deserved aspect though to it I mean even some of the, the women that was wrestling when we as I said today when we were watching it they were yeah. probably really good yeah but it was just yeah you've got three minutes yeah, I think there's right. a bit of both, isn't there? Yeah. You know, there's yeah. uh, the, there's women there with the with the ability, perhaps, that weren't given the opportunity to showcase it, and now now they're given more of an opportunity, I suppose. Yeah, that's what I speak in these times now. Like back then, like yeah. I said, that was there, but they weren't given the opportunities. And I think now we are lucky enough to be given the opportunities. But 
that wouldn't be possible without the hard work that people got that put in. So got to be thankful for them. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But when the time that we, you, you obviously done all this training, you'd worked hard and then you get a call from whoever in the WWE wanting you to come in. This, I suppose it's hard because I would, I would, I don't know how I would react personally. What was that initial, was, was he like, is this a joke or, you know, how did you react to that moment when that call come in? I think I think the first ever time they contacted me was via email uh-huh. but obviously because I trained with Pete yeah the people I was hanging around most of them were signed anyway it was kind of not in the talks but people would always be like oh have you have you heard from them have you heard from them like it was just people you know people talk mm-hmm. and I hadn't and then yeah I just had an email and it was yeah, it was shock, really. Like, I never expected... I must have been 18. Yeah, I think I was 18 when I got the email because, you know, I started wrestling when I was 14. Obviously, it soon I was lucky that it soon became, like, a career for me. But at 18, to, like, be messaged by WWE, it was ridiculous, really. Um, And, yeah, like, I've, I did a two two shows for or maybe three. did a bit of time um with them, and they very I was very grateful that they offered me something but for me at that time it wasn't the the right thing to do I wasn't I wasn't ready for it and I'm very glad that I didn't accept just because the stage of life I was at like I wasn't ready for anything like that so I'm glad I had a few years away and then I returned when I was a bit more mature let's say not not fully there but a little bit more (laughs) See, I didn't realise that. I read that on your Wikipedia page that you actually rejected the first WWE contract. I was rejected. <laughs> I know, well, that, it was their words, not mine. I yeah. didn't write it. But uh, <laughs> I didn't realise that. Uh, um, but that shows like major maturity at that young age to, to say, actually, I'm not quite ready for this. I'm going to come back when I am ready and show them what I can do and what I'm all about. Yeah, I just think it was, but obviously <laughs> the opportunity to wrestle there was incredible. But me as a person, like, I would go to these training camps for two weeks and I'd be a nervous wreck the whole time. But I just, I can't, I wouldn't eat. I'd be so stressed. Like it wasn't a very nice environment at the time. It was very like cutthroat. Like everyone was kind of friends to your face, but then you never knew like who was saying stuff behind your back as, as life is. Um, But like on the days of the shows, oh my God, I'd be so stressed. Like there's stressed and then there's, as I said, I'd be like dry heaving that stage. It was horrible. And I thought, do you know what? I'm not confident enough in my own ability to keep putting myself through this yet. Um, I wanted to travel more. And I did have people like Pete, like I spoke to him and said, what should I do? And he said, I'd go and travel, travel for a bit, get around, go to Japan, like learn from Miko. Um, and then when you're more confident and a bit more settled and come back, because they'll come asking again. And thankfully they did. Yeah. Who did you, I didn't realise, who, who did you train with in Japan then and how long were you there for? Miko Satomura. I've been that... to Japan maybe six or seven times now. Um, Normally for about three weeks I'll do the trips. Um, So yeah, Miko's incredible. Like she's one of the best in my opinion. And training with her really helped my wrestling ability. But I think Japan as a whole also built my confidence because... Again, I'm 18 years old on my own in this country that doesn't speak English mm-hmm. and I'm just wrestle. And it was just a big life lesson, like traveling on my own. Like it just made me become uh, a different person, I guess, just more confident and believe, like I start to believe in my own ability. And I guess the wrestling followed with that. It's not yeah. weird because Miko's now in NXT, right? Yeah, yeah I, don't, I, don't even, I don't even know if she is still signed. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. Did she, I don't know. I think she goes back and forth from England and Japan. I, I don't know. If she was a coach. I don't know if she still is or what she's doing, if she's waiting for the European brand. So when WWE kind of kept tabs on you then, Millie, and then um, you went back and you were offered a, a role in NXT UK? Yes, yeah, so I guess they... <clears throat> me. And uh, it was after COVID, actually. So lockdown happened. So lockdown, I was... In, not in trouble, but like... I, obviously, as an independent wrestler, like I had nothing. Like obviously, yeah. <laughs> walking around, doing nothing. 
And I remember I was at the Hungry Horse to be exact in Dudley one day. Oh, yeah, I know. And I looked for my emails and they'd emailed me and just said, hi, Millie, um, we hope you're all right. Like, would you be interested in coming back? Would you like to arrange a call? And I thought, you know what? So after lockdown, yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and then it kind of just went from there. Like I had, I spoke to my mum um, and dad and I said, right, they offered me this last time. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to come up with this figure and I'm going to say, if they offer me the same, I'm going to say, no, you know, I want this now. I've travelled. And then they rang me and they spoke to me and they offered me a figure that was already above that. And I just panicked. And went, yeah. Also. <laughs> <laughs> You um you tagged with Mika, didn't you, against uh Kaylee Ray and Isla Dawn, who are now on the, the SmackDown brand. So working with the person that trained you, did you learn in, in even in that match, did you learn while you was in that match against these guys? Oh girls, shall I say sorry? <laughs> yeah. Mika's just incredible, like just her aura as a person, like, even her entrance, even though she's not my friend and I do class her as a friend and I see her backstage and I go for food with her and we go for coffee and it's normal Miko to see Miko Satsumura it still amazes me I almost forget because because I hang around with her normally and she does so much for me that I almost forget that she's this big star and scary woman in the ring and she does still <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. um a couple of round the, the couple of rounds questions we normally play a game called shot clock on here we don't drink and we don't time it <laughs> <laughs> but um there's just like some of these are just random questions about wrestling that we had and, and that myself and Dave will play as well. We do have that it's generally the same questions anyway, but uh we might okay. have to change our answers a little bit. So um what uh what arena haven't you worked in that you would love to go to work in uh, for an atmosphere perspective, I suppose. Do you know this is okay, I'm gonna I used to train when I started training with Fight Club Pro. Mm -hmm. They used to train in Fiction Warehouse, which was like a very grungy, I yeah. don't know if you've seen the shows. Mm -hmm. And I watched those shows back around like 2017. I was front row for every single one. like, And that's where I trained. And I'd say that's where I really learned most of the stuff I know now. Mm -hmm. I never got to wrestle there because they moved to Starworks. Okay. Um, and yeah. I had my like, Fight Club debut, which was like a big moment in my career for me. But I think... To, to be able to go back there, even though it's only like you could probably fit 200 people in there max, the atmosphere was always incredible. And I think it would be like a, I never got to tick that thing off my list. Yeah. Good to be able to go back and do that. Dave, what would you want to do? Where would you? Oh, well, when we spoke about the past, we've talked about Madison Square Garden, haven't we? As, as mm -hmm. like one of the, the venues for wrestling fans and perhaps wrestlers, you know, in, in the States. So yeah. I think that would be mine. I think I said last time Philly, where ECW was 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 born. Um, the other place would be uh, pretty much where we were expecting Collision to be announced uh, on on uh, tomorrow tonight. Sorry, uh, in Chicago, just because the fans so you get you go to cities and you just know where the, yeah. what the fans are going to do, uh, what the fans are like. And Chicago has got one of those, especially if you're from Chicago and you have a Pepsi tattoo on your arm. Uh, that kind <laughs> of helps. <laughs> The best wrestling entrance music. Oh, yeah. I like those questions. I like them. Are we talking WWE? Doesn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Any you want. Oh, oh, oh God. See, I have. I feel that I have to say, Hayley Ray, yeah. because <laughs> so all my friends will attack me. But like her <laughs> old like indie music, the like yeah. I don't even know, like heavy techno, like music me and my friends used to dance to that and I wrestled her so many times and every time I'd be in the ring just like dancing to it so I have to say that even though there are so many good ones that is like, has like a personal yeah favorite for me that's fine Dave try and change it up from your last time I can't remember what you said last time to be fair oh, but... well I normally say gangrel don't I from the, yeah. the brood <laughs> uh mix it up have you heard I don't know if we spoke about it on the podcast have you heard Julia Hart's new theme you know in the AEW? house of black yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that is an absolute killer theme so this week i'm gonna go with that all right i will i will i will add to the aew as we've got to do our review of aew on friday um i'm gonna just do fozzy judas as oh. we're gonna be sick we're gonna be singing that in a couple of well trying to sing it in a couple of months <laughs> anyway at wembley so we're gonna have to do that uh next question really is 
if you had a say a triple threat match say the WWE said to you right okay Millie well it doesn't matter WWE AW who cares and yeah. they, she says right they said right fatal four-way one from the past one from the present and one that you've seen on the indies and it's for you who's it going to be <clears throat> oh god Whew. I'd say well current it has to be Moxley he's been my all-time favorite forever mm-hmm. Yeah, and I say past. It's got to be the Undertaker, hasn't it? What? Yeah, the rest of the Undertaker. Mm-hmm. Um, Good luck being in the ring when that entrance starts off. I'm gonna, I'm, I'll just cry. I'll just step on the side. <laughs> yeah. Um, independent. I mean, hmm. Do you know who I've never wrestled in singles? Man like Doris, and we have trained together for mm. ages. And one of my good friends, and I think we have this rivalry. And I think it would be funny if we were just in this match together so he can be he added into <laughs> Right, Dave, who would you like in your match? Try and change it up from like, I can't remember who he's, again, I can't remember what he said, but. My, la- so if I'm, if I, is this what I want to see as a fan ad? No, no, this is you. You're going in the ring though. This is your... Oh, man. You're on your own here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from all time, I'm going to go Eddie Guerrero. Brilliant. From the past. From the current day, I would go uh, Brian Danielson. Cool. And for in Indies, even though he's he's kind of worked in all the top promotions now in in the US and in Japan, I'd go Zack Sabre Jr. And that's a guy I'm hopeful that we get to see it all in this year. Possibly, may will be. Uh, for the past, uh, yeah, I'll have to say Stone Cold, just because of the entrance. <laughs> uh, hopefully, I'll get a beer and a stunner at the end as well, but. <laughs> <laughs> I love again the Undertaker. We're going to hit entrance. We're going to hit entrances in a minute. Actually, we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, the present, ooh, it's a tough one. I want to say Seth, Seth, Seth Rollins because I, I love, I love his theme song as well. So I can dance to it while he's coming down. Uh, <laughs> and the independence. Well, we do a lot with independence at the minute, and I'm going to say my good friend Smashing Mike just because. Uh, uh, I know him very well. He's been on all of our shows and he's going to be heavily involved in uh, Buckle Up that we're doing. So I'm going to say Smashing Mike for that one. Um, Millie, we've touched on wrestling entrance music. What about the best wrestling entrance? As in well, presentation. Presentation, I'm saying American. Presentation. I guess I've already, I've already said it. I think for me, it has to be Undertaker. Yeah. It has to be. Like, and I think like, because when I started watching wrestling again, I didn't have like, I didn't pay for the big pay per views. Mm. So watch, I used just used to watch the entrances on YouTube and like Triple H is like big ones at WrestleMania. Like all, yeah. all the entrances are good, but I'd say the Undertaker surely has to be like the most, the biggest spectacle. Yeah, definitely, Dave. Uh I I love Adam Cole's entrance. So maybe that's not quite on the same level as the Undertaker <laughs> and quite not as iconic. Um, but yeah, I love when wrestlers incorporate like the music in with their actions as well. And he's got a couple of moments in his entrance when he does uh, when he does that. So I'm going Adam Cole, baby. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, the, the Undertaker would have been mine. So I'm going to change it. Uh, Jesus, that's going to be tough now. Uh, for for a fear factor, and this isn't this isn't because it's presentation. It's because it's a bit like the Undertaker. When when you look at the Undertaker, the gong goes off, the smoke goes off, and he walks out. You think, "Oh shit!" And exactly the same as what I would think if I heard this guy's music and this guy walk out would be Brock Lesnar, just because mm. it's an absolute fridge, and just to see him walking out, thinking, "Yeah, he's going to absolutely kill me in a minute." Uh, yeah. I'm just going to say that just just for that purpose. Um, Millie, we touched on all, um, we finished that game. So, so thanks for playing that. We'll have another little game later, which is a, a little bit. Uh, it's more word association. That's the second game that we'll play. Oh. So that's going to be fun. Oh. Um, <laughs> and I haven't written any names down, so the names are going to be off the cuff tonight. Um, we talk, Dave just touched on it. All, all in uh, AEW. We thought we'd bring this up quickly. Um, was it a ballsy move them trying to do Wembley for their first uh, UK show? Do you think? <clears throat> I think, like you've got to take risks, haven't you? Like they've got mm. such a following, like they may as well come over here and make a statement. Like, they're not going to run a small place in Wolverhampton or anywhere like that. They may as well <laughs> go straight with the the big one. Um, so yeah. fair play. But I think that show will be incredible. Um, and the whole weekend around it, really. 
Yeah, because is it is it pro is it progress is doing it, so, aren't they? goes around that time. Like, I'm mm. an all don't even know what's going on, but I think there is there's definitely a few. From a UK perspective, Millie, are you kind of hopeful that AEW invites some of the the UK stars and, and indie wrestlers to to be a part of the show? Yeah, I guess there's always hope, but I think looking at it from a, a fan's perspective is the people that are going to watch that show want to watch the AEW wrestlers. They watch us every week, and yeah, it'd be great to like to be given a, an opportunity. Like you're paying to see that, aren't you? You see us every. And whether I'm just being harsh on us here, like I'd love to see my. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think there's, a, I do think there's a lot of British fans out there that are expecting to see some of the biggest, the Brit, the biggest British independent names on that show. I really do. Like you touched on Jack Saber Junior, uh, Dave, and, and they're looking potentially. I, I can't quite remember what's happening. Um, there's a match going on soon in Japan where the winner gets Kenny Omega eventually. Mm. Whether that's at Forbidden Door or that. Or all in is another one. But I think there's still an element of fans. I'm kind of expecting to see a few British names in there. I, I want to go to see the likes of, I want to go and see the show because I've never seen an AEW show before. Um, but I'm intrigued to see because I think they're going to try and bring in a few of the Brits just to, uh, you know, make it more British, I suppose. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. I think people like Zach, though, obviously he's British, but mm. I don't even know he's English because he's always. Like in, I don't know where he lives. I think he lives in Japan or he lives yeah. in America. Like obviously he's British, but he is regularly seen by the common indie crowd at the moment. I don't think so. He is still like a obviously he's a massive name. Yeah. So it would be good to wrestle like an in, more indie name, even though he is indie. But yeah, yeah. Hey, well, um, obviously touching back on, on your career, Millie. Um, things ended up with WWE. I think it was last August time. I think they released. A lot of uh, the rest of the, or all of the NXT UK guys. Um, did they mention at the time, or was there a thought amongst the wrestlers, wrestlers that uh, NXT Europe would be a thing? I know that we've heard rumours of that. Um, is the door still open for you as far as you're aware to, to go back to the WWE? Is that something you'd even want to do, or have you ticked that box now? No, I think, um, well, that we were all kind of on a group call, and they just said, look, we've got some news for you you know we've had a great time with nxt uk you've all grown the brand's grown but you know we want to move on to bigger and better things now so we're going to close this brand give us a give us some time and we're going to sort europe okay. that's what they said to us and then they sacked us all thank you for that yeah. <laughs> and they yeah i think they're working on it and um, they said like stay in touch keep in contact and i guess I'd go back. I think anyone. I think anyone would, and I think anyone that says they wouldn't is lying. <laughs> yeah, I'm very grateful for this year I've had traveling and stuff, but I think realistically, it's not sustainable. Like I'm young now. I'm I'm 22. I'm resting every week and stuff, and it's I, I love it. I do love it, but I think if I want to be doing this full time, like there needs to be a mix, like rest, like body wise. As I said, I'm resting three times a week. It's just and training and I miss I miss the WWE schedule sometimes. Some somewhere in the middle would be nice. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's nice having a, a stable income opposed to like now if I get injured then I've got nothing. Like yeah. I need that stable income coming in. I've got bills to pay, unfortunately, and I eat a lot. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I must say you're one of the one of the only people that said they don't mind the WWE schedule. I know I suppose it's different in NXT than yeah. the main roster, but that was just kind of that kind of tickled me a bit. The amount of people going on saying, yeah, the schedule's a nightmare. But uh yeah, that's quite interesting though, because obviously we you know, as Dave said, we do hear a lot about this 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 European branch, mm. but they now seem to be looking at different areas like I think, I think I read the other day potentially Dubai is coming. This is for more live events. So I you know, don't necessarily say they're going to open a, a center or something over there, but they're looking at, I think, Dubai. I think they're going to India for an event. So I think they know quite easily and quite comfortably that if they were to open like a European thing, it's, it, the talent is there. It's just a case of bringing them in whenever they, whenever they, you know, whenever they want to decide to open it. Um, yeah. who, what was the best bit of advice you've ever been given, either either pre or post WWE, by someone that you was training or working with? I'd say that it would have to be Pete telling me not to sign because obviously, eighteen years old, you get waved this big contract in your face, and you have to turn down 
money and obviously at 18 like your friends are all I was working in a restaurant like earning something like five pound an hour and then all of a sudden you get like the dream job I've had my whole life all of a sudden I'm being told to turn it down um and I think I'm so glad I did because I wasn't ready I wasn't I didn't have the correct outlook or mindset so I'm just glad that Pete told me even though I didn't want to sign although I wanted to I knew I wasn't ready but to hear it from someone that I admired and trusted that kind of set it in stone is there an element of like you look at these young British because I mean like Soraya was one that signed WWE really early and it kind of maybe had a negative on her as she went along a bit obviously she had to retire for the injury she's come back now which is fantastic and she seems to be doing great but she signed at a very young age and it looked maybe that she had struggled kind of with what you were alluding to maybe a confidence thing maybe living in America or she was on her own at that time obviously her family is still over here do you kind of also think about? I know you said you took advice from from Pete, but was there? Did you think about that as well, or did you look back now and think, yeah, that actually looking at what happened or taking a chance to look what happened for someone like Saraya, that it was it was the right move, even though you kind of always said it was right. <laughs> yeah, I think like <clears throat> it's a weird one because for me, I started wrestling really young, like fourteen. That is very young, and it is the best thing, and also the worst thing. Because I started so young, I was training. I was kind of in a position now, like I'm on shows. All my friends are like maybe five years older than me, like late twenties, and I'm still young twenties, um, which is fine now. But like as a, I say child, as a young adult, you go through some things really that in a very male dominated place with people that take advantage, and I just think outside of wrestling like wrestling I'm glad I got in into it early but outside for real life I think that's where you've got to f- form confidence in yourself outside of wrestling in your normal life and obviously wrestling can have an impact on that if that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah it absolutely does it does indeed do you um do you feel Millie that it, it's a safer environment now for, for for women and young girls coming into the industry uh has some good come out of like what was a horrible situation and and, you know, some of the things that came out in the press. Uh, is it better now? Yeah, I think a lot of the bad people went away and people just needed to know what they were doing with, like, safeguarding stuff. And I think safeguarding for me isn't just, oh, I'm DBS checked, I can do this. It's just being aware of the situation and having someone to talk to. And just in regards to even things before, like, obviously all the, the bad stuff happened, but just little things before where like I'd be 17 and I'd be wrestling and some random bloke could pick me up and then I'd be staying in this hotel that was awful and stuff like that which is fine like I guess it's fine like I know it's a low budget thing but just being more comfortable with that and making sure little things like that like okay you're going to be traveling with someone or so and so is going to pick you up you don't have to just get in this random bloke's car and just just little things like that that are now like I will definitely if there's someone I, I feel even though I am young I feel slightly responsible for the girls coming up now because yeah. I was once there and I didn't really have a girl looking out for me as much because there wasn't really I, I did have girls but like no one that was close to around my area looking out for me as such um so I feel now like whereas I'd have let things slip at that age now I'll say something on their behalf yeah. Um, for them because I know I wouldn't have said something then. Mm-hmm. Is it more of a confidence thing now? Maybe I remember what you're saying all the stuff that come out of the press and stuff like that. Is there like, was it like, did you think now that kind of helps this generation now to say, look, if there is something, just reach out where they may have not done in the past? <clears throat> I think, yeah, I think it definitely has helped because, like you say, people will speak out if something's wrong. But then I also think that can have a negative effect as mm. well. And people will go too far the other way, in which I think it has. And that's not undermining anyone's stories, because obviously when it I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Yeah. And undermining anyone's stories. But I think people are too sensitive to it sometimes. Um and as long as you're safe, like I'm trying to think of an example of something I mean, but you know, people just moan for the sake of moaning. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think that's the direction it was going in, not so much now, but I yeah. think it's like a steady medium. 
was there also a concern that like that the person that comes out would get a reputation and that would affect them from maybe going elsewhere and, and getting a job elsewhere <clears throat> yeah i think again again with me personally i think after all the stuff happened or whatever people were terrified to talk to me and this is people i've known for ages hmm. like but I've, I've done nothing wrong people were just terrified to talk to me because they didn't know how to react and no one knew how to react to the situation and it kind of took a few months to I'm not evil. I'm not anything. I'm just the same old me. Don't like, I'm not a nasty person. Don't walk on eggshells around me. Yeah. And it took almost a year, I'd say, to, for the scene to kind of relax and not relax and behaviors to slip up again, but like relax and be like, okay, just be a nice person, be a good person. And that's yeah. all you need to. Exactly. Yeah. I think on that note, let's go and play word association. Let's yeah, go and change up and have a bit more of a. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> But basically, this game is quite simple. I'll give you a name uh, in someone in wrestling. You give us a word, word or phrase that uh, comes to your mind when I mention a name and we'll play along with you. I'm going to start with William Regal. What's his? Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of his lizard's name. Winston. 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 Yes. Winston, there you go. <laughs> Dave. Ah, uh, pot of tea. Do you remember the... the yes, Jericho, when Jericho piddled in the tea. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to say expressions because his expressions... Uh, you kind of touched on it there, Dave, with, with the tea. That and Excalibur because he used to call him his bit of crumpet or whatever he used to say on commentary, which, yeah. which was quite funny. Um, next one, uh, Shawn Michaels. Sunny. Funny. Cool. Dave. Switch your music. Uh, he's one of my goats. So I say goat. And one of the greatest of all time. Uh, we touched on her early one. Trish Stras. Inspirational. Great word. Dave. Oh, trailblazer. You nick mine. Is that yours? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. Don't worry. Um, Leader because she did lead the uh, the division through the women's division at that stage in the WWE. So I say leader. Uh, you've touched on him as well, Undertaker. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope he's not. But yeah, <laughs> not literally, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Streak. Streak. What a shame he got broken. Uh, I'm just going to say entrance because I love it. And I think that it's one of the only ones I still, my my hairs and my arms go if I ever hear it. That Just that first gong. That's it. And there's only a couple of entrances to do that, but that, that's one of them. Uh, I'm going to do his fictional brother now, Kane. Scary. <laughs> he used to scare me. He did at first, definitely when he first came in. I was even quite afraid of him when he first came in. Towel. Remember when he lost his mask and he just came <laughs> in the out tower? He had that. He, he had like a bit of white hair, head. and he had like half of it was sort of like a bit of like stubble <laughs> around it, and then the other half was bald. You went from this awesome mask that was so synonymous with WWF at the time, and it was replaced by that little black towel. Yeah, I'm going to say the simple word, and I say it every time we have a podcast, and every time I tell a story about it, it's pyro. Because oh God. that's the only pyro that is, I've absolutely been scared shitless of on two occasions because I wasn't expecting it. And that's the big, well, you can tell sometimes, wrestler comes out, you go, right, like Cody Rhodes. He's going to go, whoa, and then he's going to do something and there's going to be some pyro. That's fine. But when Kane had it, he had it at the time when, because he, he used to play music and then it used to do it. And then it went from that to bang, then I'm going to play the music. And that was the two times that it caught me out uh, at an event. Uh, Lita is the next one on the list. Trendy. Trendy. <laughs> Team Extreme. Team Extreme. I I'm gonna say rated R because she was with my other goat on my list, which is the next person on the list. Edge. <clears throat> I like his sunglasses. Oh no, that's not one word. Sunglasses. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> sunglasses. Brilliant. That, that's great. Five second pose. Five second pose. Uh, I, I'm going to literally say brood because he was a part of the brood. And the final one, I think it would be fitting. Pete Dunn. Friend. <laughs> I'm saying like the in-betweeners. <laughs> Friend. 
<laughs> oh, he's so nice. Dave. Yeah, I can't say friend, uh, but I can say nice. I had the, the um, I took my friend's kid to a fight club pro show back in Wolverhampton, and uh, he really wanted to go and meet Pete Dunn. Uh, he wanted to buy his T-shirt, and, and he was like really nervous to go and speak to a wrestler. So I went along with Ethan, and Pete couldn't have been more friendlier. He signed a personalised autograph to him and had a picture with him, and, and he was absolutely great with him. So friendly, I'll go with. Friendly? Oh. Yeah. My, my one's going to be quite bad, because I'm going to say the word, and it's probably going to, because it could sound worse, I'm going to say joint, but not for the re- obvious reason, but for the, the <laughs> fact that he joint does all the stamping on the finger joints and works on that, that that's why i'm going to say that word bruise away, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bruise away. That, i should have just said that that would have been great um we're going to start to wrap up a bit now but dave did you share some nachos with millie once you kept telling me via text <laughs> we did share yeah, i've got one i've got one last question for oh, me. Go, it's quite shoot. a big one but yeah we did we did uh have some nachos together once prior to a wrestlemania show mill so that's my yeah. that's my claim to fame at the minute so <laughs> I need you to go on and become like WWE Women's Champion, so I can. I can yeah, I've got that story. <laughs> um, but what are your? I know this is this isn't a quick answer. Um, but what are your goals and aspirations now in wrestling? Who are some of the women that you'd like to face? Um, is, is there a? Are you, do you just want to like be enjoying what you're doing where, wherever that is, or is there something in mind where you go, "This is my dream. This is what I want to achieve." I think I'm very easygoing and kind of just happiness based. Like I want to do what makes me happy. I like traveling. I loved Australia. I'd love to go back there. I haven't been to America yet. Um, so hopefully I can do that in some shape or form. But other than that, like I like just wrestling. There's a few uh, girls at the minute. It's Billy Starks, mm-hmm. Sapphire Reed. She's really good. Um, people like that, that I want to wrestle more and more that are kind of, I say up and coming, like they're already kind of, there but you know I want to wrestle them more and challenge myself because I think they're incredible but I think the most important thing for me is just keep having fun and see where I end up interesting and Millie why don't you just tell everybody where they can find you on socials what you've got coming up we know you're a very busy bee so please fire away you know I I don't even know what I'm doing oh the week super strong style um that's coming up that's my next show uh my Twitter and Instagram, I don't even know. I think it's Millie McKenzie Zero, or it might be Millie McKenzie WWE. Who knows? You're going to be Tipton soon, Mill, aren't you? Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Black I'm Country Wrestling. Yeah. Black Country. On the, is it the 9th of June? That's right, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, that'll be fun, because some of my friends are coming to watch that one. That'll be, I can't wait for that. Um, yeah, I'll be there. I am the most unorganised person ever. I have no clue where I'll be, but I will see you somewhere. Yeah. yeah, bring the nachos, Dave. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, the, uh, your, your Twitter is at M McKenzie WWE. Uh, Thank you. No worries. I'll just do it's your. Ins- got- <laughs> yeah. Uh, can, can I be your uh, social? Get yes. Your, your social. Yeah. Great. Um, I'm just going to find your uh, Insta so you, we can promote. I think Instagram's Millie McKenzie. I think. Or well, that might be a lie again. I don't know. Just trying to find it right now. Uh, it's again, yeah, it's the same. No, it's M McKenzie WWE is your okay. official. I know. <laughs> yeah, so I'm taking the job now as Millie's social media promoter, so I'll be coming off the podcast going forward. No, um, just go quick one from us, Dave. So we're back Friday, me and you. Uh, I'm actually back in a little while, actually. I'm doing a top 10 WWE special with Andy. I don't quite know the ins and outs of that, but I'm doing it. Um, we're back Friday. Me and you are reviewing the final AEW before Double or Nothing. I then jump off of that onto another podcast with the lovely Fiona from Inside the Ropes. And we are talking to NWA star uh, Jax Dane. Uh, Sunday, Dave, me and you again are going to be, rev- we're going to be doing a preview with your boys at Honor the Elite, right? That's right, yeah. We're yeah. going to be talking to them guys, we're going to be doing a prediction show for Double or Nothing. Uh, this time next week, I and me, I think me and Andy are going to be talking to the wrestling personality that pissed CM Punk off uh, during the All Out press conference. Oh. And he's also just had a bit of beef with Matt Cardona today uh, on, on Twitter, that's Nick Hausman. Uh, we meet uh, 
the Welsh wrestler Yestin Reese next Thursday, and then on the sixth of June, we have the que- the death. I bet she said that she's the death match queen, and she's the baddest bitch on the Indies, Millie. So perhaps you need to have a word with her. Uh, <laughs> Steph Delanda will be coming on, and then finally that week we talk to uh, Ignite Wrestling uh, breakout star Harrison Lee. All things buckle up. Dave, it's been lovely having you on as always. Go and uh, get rid of that man flu, please, and be fit for Friday. Well done, mate. Millie, thank you so much. It's been an absolute blast speaking to you on this podcast today. Thanks for joining us, Mel. That was great. Thank you very much. I really Guys, agree. this has been the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. For the man down there, DMD, I'm Adam Cousins, and we will see you again soon. Good night. Good night.